Hunting Africa's unicorns, Paul the deer manager becomes Paul the antelope manager. Mountain Hunter Challenge, Tim's the only Brit in the pack, running, abseiling, sawing, yes, as with a saw and wood, and shooting his way around a gruelling Austrian course. Plus Scottish stags with an old friend in an absolutely beautiful place, we have news, we have hunting YouTube, welcome to Field Sports Britain. as hard as I can to achieve as much as I can. If you don't like working for your animal, then this is probably not the place for you. Before we get to barrels and brass, Paul and Nico are appreciating the birds and the bees. Birds and the bees. The birds and the bees, yeah. You see the male, it's standing behind the, pushing her, pushing her with his front leg the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Trying to get her into a position so that he can mount her. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a pair of springbok are doing the Eastern Cape Shuffle. A well-placed bush keeps things under wraps. <laughs> what the do I don't know. <laughs> Basically, just get on with it. Having completed a successful kudu hunt with Eastern Cape Bushveld hunting, Paul is asked by Nico if he'd like to shoot his unicorn. This one-horned impala is more trouble than he's worth. A one-horned or one-antlered animal brings a knife to a fist fight. So Nico, why, why are you keen to get this impala off the, the ground? Well, that particular impala has got a broken horn. Yeah, yeah. So when it fights with other rams, 95% of the time it'll win the fight yeah. and mate with the females, but it can also hurt and kill the other rams. Right, right, yeah. And if you look at the one remaining horn, it's not very good genetics. Yeah. So I don't want him really breeding with the females. Yeah, yeah. That's why I think it's better to take him off and leave the, the better, uh, better quality rams to sort out amongst themselves who, you know, yeah, yeah. who gets the females. Get him gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. get him gone. Better to okay. take him down. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. All right, let's go and work with a sweat. Okay. <laughs> this is going to be a very different type of hunt. We are now on flatter, more open ground. Anybody that runs land knows roughly where they're going to be times of day, whether you're hunting Robux or Kudu in Eastern Cape, you know, it's still a little bit of luck and, and weather and everything else, so yeah, it's all good. He's coming into that gap. That's good for weather. Yeah, we got right into him, right into him. This one, one horn in parliament into the river bed and uh, up onto the far bank, come through one of these trees and he had a branch, thick branch like this, right across his vitals. Safety was off, one step either way. That's good, all oh, good. Plan two, B, minus one. <laughs> Nico thinks the best thing to do is to come back in the morning as we know where they are. Paul has experienced Africa many times. His friend Julian hasn't. 
While Paul is left to watch the sunset, Nico guides Julian into a beautiful, this time two-horned impala ram. Good shot, you very have, good shot. You have done this for me. <laughs> you have done this for me. <laughs> You've got no idea what kind of a ram that is. A what can I say? Huge quality ram. <laughs> Massive. Yeah, all oh, big ram. I protected this this male for quite a while, trying to give him as much chance to to uh, breed with the females. It's got very, very unique genes. You can see how wide the spaces are between the grooves, wide spread. But he's post mature now. He got kicked out out of the group by another male, and uh, he moved out of that area and he came into this area. He lived here for quite a while now. So, um, but it's a beautiful old animal, and he deserves all the respect and honor for for growing this big. I am um, for the reasons I look after them for long. I mean, I've, I've, I've been watching this ram now for four years. Um, it's probably about six or seven years old, but I really only started noticing it, its, its potential after about two, two and a half years of age. So, um, and from that point on, I did what I could to, to give him all the opportunities to, to you know to breed so to see an animal like this grow this big and then hunt it it's it is quite emotional for me he definitely deserves a, a place on the wall not to be forgotten good good ram as well is it yeah let me show you a picture oh yeah belter cool he is yeah that's an old boy is he yeah very old ram hmm all right buddy Good work. Thank you. <laughs> What's today been like? Um, it's very emotional, very overwhelming for someone that's shot deer in England to stand here. I'm in Africa. That just doesn't happen. I'm with some very, very nice people, Paul included, yourself, Nico, and a um, tracker here. What better situation can you be in? And to pull the results as well. So, very good day, very good day. Adrenaline? Uh, off the scale. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it, it comes down when, when you've got to pull the trigger. It, uh, it's just different style of shooting. A lot of walking, a lot of glassing. The distances are far greater. Um, so, yeah, keeping the, the heart under control, stop it bouncing and not shooting over or under. But really good. With the right people, you can do, do the right job here in Africa. And with the right equipment as well. The following morning we're in luck. The Unicorn Impala is just a few hundred metres from where we left it yesterday.
This time there is nothing to block the shot from the Seiko Carbon Wolf in 6.5 Creedmoor. Okay, here it is, Paul. Great stuff, thank you. Congratulations, thank you good shot. Much. Great oh. stuff. He's clean, isn't he? How clean he is. Yeah. He hasn't lost condition because of the horn either, has he? No, no, no. Yeah. No, he won't lose condition. Yeah, great animal. He's fat, fat as always. But um, but the danger to the other ones, to the other rams. Yeah. And uh, he will definitely, the rut's over now, but when they're in rut, in full rut, he'll definitely hit the other other rams. So, yeah. great that we took him out. Uh, so, it's the ideal one to take out the system, is it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Great stuff. Well done once again. Thank you, thank you very much. Thanks for getting me into him. I was expecting quite a few ticks because they obviously it's a stock farm, so um, you know you got livestock with, with the sheep and the goats. They carry lots of ticks, and um, Nico was saying that they uh, they have to dip them, and inject them every two weeks, the whole year. I just can't believe it. Um, but the animals are really clean, so maybe it's like the management of the stock is helping the management of the of the wild animals as well. Last time I was over, all these all these grass heads, you'd see five or six ticks in the top with their like with their claw hanging out, ready to catch a clothing or or whatever else. But I haven't seen that here at all. Um, I've only seen one tick, and that was on the uh, the springbok yesterday. Just one tick. So yeah, really good. Nico looks after and protects his domestic stock and his game because they have value. No value. No animals, be that goats or impala. It's such an easy concept to grasp, but many people choose not to. Next time, it's bush buck, and it is not easy. Day three, we're on bush buck. We're on day three, bush buck, bush buck. Day three, back on the cliff top, trying to ambush the bush buck. For more information about hunting with Nico, go to eastcapebushfelthunting.co.za. And for more information about Sacco rifles and bullets, including the Sacco 85 Carbon Wolf, go to sacco.fi. Thank you to Nico and thank you to Paul. And I have to say well done to Paul, who at the weekend won his sixth world kickboxing title. A lot more to that man than meets the eye. We really do work with some very talented people. And then there's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Shooters heading to Scotland with firearms are being banned from boarding flights, and airlines are blaming the UK's gun laws. A sudden and unannounced ban on flying passengers who are carrying hunting rifles has hit passengers on Lufthansa. According to Lufthansa's German website, the airline is no longer allowing passengers to fly to Aberdeen, Inverness, Glasgow and Edinburgh. This change in policy leaves passengers hoping to travel to Scotland stranded with guns across Europe. Here's Konstantin Weinberger of Austrian hunting agent Wild Tradition. All guys called Lufthansa before to check if they could bring their rifles and everything was good. They booked the flight, all their weapons were all registered and now they're supposed to be flying for, for the Red Deer Rut, which is week 42. And Lufthansa informed them they cannot bring their rifles. Lufthansa just simply said, no, you can't bring your rifles to those destinations. Look, have a look at our transportation policies. And they found out that Lufthansa would have not informed them on anything but just stopped them at the airport. No, I'm, I'm afraid it might be, might be the anti-hunting lobby doing quite a good job. The Observer newspaper has tried to shock its readership with a film of a badger being dispatched. It shows the animal trapped in a cage and being shot at close range. Among inaccuracies, the anti-hunting newspaper claims the post-mortem twitching of the carcass is evidence that the badger takes almost a minute to die. Thanks to Neil Pritchard for sending in the story. There are claims that the League Against Cruel Sports has attempted to hack the computer of a senior member of the Countryside Alliance. The Charity Commission has confirmed it's looking into serious concerns about the League Against Cruel Sports, which has many liberal and left-wing supporters, some in Parliament. Meanwhile, pro-Corbyn Labour MP and longtime trustee of the League, Chris Williamson, confirmed on Friday that he's been expelled from the group after he reportedly alerted the regulator to concerns about the charity's leadership. 
Pictured here with Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn, he said nine trustees have left the group recently and slammed a lack of transparency over recruitment practices, alleged bullying and harassment and financial irregularities and called for CEO Andy Knott to step down. The Welsh hunting community gathered for the funeral of Bradley John, the 14-year-old who inspired the hashtag Blow for Bradley campaign. Bradley died after an incident at his school in Wales. Hundreds of people and more than 50 horse riders gathered at Ammonford to follow his hearse as it left the service at Aberavon. Bradley's own horse led the procession, flanked by his father Byron and stepmother Kate. Bradley was a founding member of the Three Counties Bloodhounds. His riding boots, hat and crop were on top of his coffin. The new sport Target Sprint made BBC Breakfast TV. Target Sprint held three days of competition over the weekend, starting with the British Open, then the ISSF World Tour, which saw GB and German teams competing, and the final of the UK's Target Sprint series. This film shows contestant Minty Stubbs shooting five targets with five pellets after running 800 metres. Here, GB's leading Target Sprint shooter and junior women's British champion, Emily Scheuer, speaks to Andy McGarty for Field Sports Channel. Yes, they're fantastic. All the World Tour events in Germany, the Netherlands and Italy. And then topping it off with the World Championships in Korea, where I came second. Fantastic. So what does the future hold? Well, definitely building on that performance and getting more PVs. The first practical shooting show has taken place in Exeter. The two-day event, organised by the Tunnel Target Sports Centre, drew a crowd of practical shooters from all over the UK, plus several hundred locals interested in shooting and keen to find out about this sport. African swine fever has hit Western Europe. Belgium has discovered two cases in wild boar, which could close down the pork industry. African swine fever has already led to culls in Eastern Europe. When it was discovered at Europe's second largest farm in Romania in late August, authorities culled around 140,000 pigs. Bulgaria has reinstated driven boar hunting after testing a thousand animals. Thanks to Felix Jacobi from Luxembourg for sending in the story. The American state of Ohio has released 14,000 pheasants for its citizens to shoot. The birds were set free in 24 public hunting areas in Ohio to encourage locals to go hunting. The Ohio pheasant season runs from the 2nd of November to the 13th of January, daylight hours only, with two extra weekends in October for under 17s to go shooting. The daily bag limit is two cock birds. The Wounded Warriors programme is taking former soldiers hunting. In this film, a family in Minnesota hosted a group of veterans to go turkey hunting and thank them for their service. It's the third year that Wounded Warriors United Minnesota took veterans out after turkeys. They shot two. And finally, an American political hopeful is promoting shooting. And she's a Democrat. New Mexico Democrat congressional candidate Zochil Torres Small showcases her gun skills in a new advert. She wants the conservative district she hopes to represent to understand that she's not the kind of Democrat who wants to take away its guns. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now here's the thing, channel memberships. It's a YouTube thing. You can become a Field Sports Channel member. You'll get my exclusive behind the scenes weekly vlog. You will hear about tickets to free events which we help to organize before anybody else gets to hear about them. And you can use your membership to buy shares in Field Sports Channel. We even have the Field Sports Channel shield as an emoji. Isn't that great? And you will have a say in which films we make to help save hunting, shooting and fishing from the antis because we believe YouTube is the best public forum to showcase our sport. OK, we might not change the minds of the lettuce nibblers, but with the wider meat-eating public, there's everything to play for. So how do you support Field Sports Channel and join up? It's $4.99 a month. All you have to do is click on the Join button that appears next to our videos on most devices. Sorry, Apple users. If you can't see it yet, it's coming soon. And supposing you don't want to join, well, don't worry. We'll still be putting up the films you've come to expect from us. But don't you want a little bit more? Now, Tim Pillbeam, a few weeks ago, Steyr Arms asked if he'd like to come and join a mountain hunter test. Most journalists sensibly pulled out of that one, but not Tim. The 
18. We've got to beat these guys. Look at them. They're young, they're fit, they're army boys, they're used to all this. Meters. And uh, there we go. We've got rucksacks here with 25 kilograms of weight. Uh, that's the weight of a chamois. And uh, we're heading up there. See right over there? That's where we're going. The next discipline is Christian's shooting a target at 50 meters with a 2 2 rim fire. So it's like a bear on top of thing. So I'm rather hoping he can get four hits. so brilliant. It's so Austrian. It's so Steyr. The star challenge. You've got to do it. It's the way to go. Well done Tim and the top shooting team and fifth in the table now from the Austrian Alps to the Scottish Highlands. first thing that strikes you about stalking above the Helmsdale River is the scenery. This is proper vast Scotland. John, the Scottish stalker, is taking Lionel, the Belgian guest, out onto the hill after a red stag. Well, you can see right over at Aberdeen, it's nice. A clear day, it's, ah, you can see a fair way. It's probably my best souvenir of the stalk. Uh, for me, being Belgian, from hunting a, a stag is in the forest. So uh, being able to shoot a stack with in the, um, the background the beautiful sea and some uh, clouds is just a, a panorama absolutely magnificent. We, we had the chance to have a wonderful stalker uh, called John. Uh, he knew exactly how to do it. He knew the land, he knows every single old uh, in the highland. So in fact, the, he, we knew almost from the beginning the zone where to go. The difficulty was to go there. And then, but as always, you walk, you crawl, and uh, you try to be the most silent uh, as possible. There are several groups of deer visible as we gain the high ground. We spot one deer among the sheep, lower than the rest, and it's clear there's something wrong with it. Quite surprising, to be honest. I didn't spot her uh, straight away. Uh, we find uh, quite low on the hill and she had the, the front right legs completely uh, broken, so completely soft. I don't know from what it is, maybe a, m a mischut or something like that. Uh, she was still running well, but it's probably not the, the best condition for her. Uh, we headed on to the easterly march and then that's when we sort of found our first wounded looking victim. It was down at the bottom of that bound there. Uh, I don't know, I would suggest maybe shot with a lighter calibre. You mean like a 2 2? Uh, yeah, or maybe one of the smaller centre fire calibres. I don't know, it could have been causing agricultural damage, I suppose, in one of the neighbouring areas, or it could have just been one of those unlucky ones that was next to the road and somebody thought it'd be an easy victim. Was there any way we could have got onto it? Mm, 
not particularly where it was, no, it was making its way out. And, uh, I mean, is something like that, do you want to take it out or can it survive perfectly well on three legs? A difficult one to say, I'd rather not have it on the ground, to be honest, it didn't really look like it was enjoying life. After the injured deer, we find the groups with the beasts that John is happy to take. Yeah, the, there was a large group of hens, one on each side of the barn there. There was a couple of younger stags in with the hens. The more mature stags were in the group that we stalked into. Could we have got anywhere near the stags in the first large group of hinds? Uh, possibly, but I think it would have been a lot more tricky and a lot more time consuming than the other ones. And apart from that, the stag that we really wanted to shoot was in the the group that we went to so. So did you spot that group fairly early on? It was probably about the same sort of time as we spotted the other two to be honest. But we had to kind of make our way through the other two really didn't we? Ah, that's just part of the challenge though. <laughs> I would say they were pretty unaware really until we got to that point where we actually stopped to have a good look but by that point they weren't going to disturb anything we were going to. You're, you're now crawling into position. Uh -huh. what, have, what have you seen down there? There was obviously the more mature stag out of the group and there was another two younger stags and then there was I think also two young stags as in spikers. There was one hind at the top of the group. At this time of year you could expect all sorts of mixed groups with odds and ends. The, the wind was fighting against us so we had to approach them um, calling. There's no, no other way for to, to be that close. Two people, it's already difficult to make sure we are not seen by, by the stags. I had quite a lot of confidence in Leo, to be honest. Uh, he'd been to Scotland a few times and yeah, he seemed to do quite a lot of hunting back home as well. The stag on the bottom, uh, with the two young, younger ones around him. Um, it was a shot around 150 yards, something like that, so not the most difficult shot, but the, what is difficult is the position, in fact, because you cannot lift your head, you have loads of herbs, etc. in the way, so you need to, to sneak out a little bit the right position to be able to shoot. But uh, it's not a rest bench, so in, in real life it's completely different. But we succeed, so it's all good. I was just glad because on the previous conversation that we'd had the night before, He'd mentioned his experiences with stags previously, so I was just quite aye, happy to actually see him get one. And the fact that it was slightly bigger than the last one, I was, yeah, it was nice and he seemed quite impressed and chuffed himself. So what is Lionel taking away from this stalk? What memories will he cherish? Well, one thing is the hard walk in and out of the hill. Yeah, I deserve that stag because that was, that was hard. That was hard. <laughs> ah, the adrenaline always picks up when they see the stag. <laughs> no fence, beautiful uh, uh, view on the sea, uh, but first I go back to the gym <laughs> for a couple of months uh, and I give up smoking. I said that I would give up smoking last year, but honestly this time I need to go back to the gym. Well John smokes and he seems to be fine. Yeah, so he's probably not a human, I don't know. <laughs> he's Scottish, so it's probably from that. <laughs> not enough whiskey. Maybe I should try to drink whiskey first before the gin. This may be the solution. <laughs> if you want to push your limits, you can stalk here too. For more about stalking with John, talk to Lackey Smith at Highland Sporting. Email ls at highlandsporting.com. Thank you, John, and thank you, Lionel, who is a Field Sports Channel shareholder. Now, if you want to keep it Celtic this week, have a look at Field Sports Ireland, just out. In the new episode, Jason Doyle goes wildfowling in the wilds of County Wexford. A lovely morning on Teal and Widgeon, and then he's into the car and off to the River Bush in Northern Ireland to look at local efforts to save the salmon. Plus, he road tests the new Viperflex shooting sticks. Click on the eye symbol top right to watch that film. Next up, let's go for the best hunting and shooting videos on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube.
This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. In Scotland, Alba deer stalking calls a seeker stag for a client. As it comes to the call, you can hear the stalker become increasingly keen that the client takes the shot. In Germany, after Pirsch had a late but exceptional roebuck rut this year, now immortalised on film, this is part one, the mature abnormal buck. Owen from British Stalking Operations Service UK is in the south of France enjoying the last few days of the wild boar season, though he points out that this region has a permanent open season because the population is so high. Short and sharp, Duck and Goose Shooting Scotland puts up this film of three teal shot with two shots. Over the water in Northern Ireland, Duck Commander NI shows this early morning duck shooting outing with Mallard, Tufties, Teal and Gadwall on show. Here is an Irish fallow buck heart shot at 250 yards by RFD Hunter. It goes down quickly. In Northern Cyprus, Hakan Hagioglu is out crow shooting. You might not understand the Turkish, but you will get the shooting. And finally, we can't let this film from Hunting YouTube's sponsor, the British Shooting Show, go by. It is the promo for the British Shooting Show 2019 and you will be seeing us there. That's it for this week. I have put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the I symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. Best of all, pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. Plus, you can back us. Become a member of the Field Sports Channel Nation. Go to fieldsportschannel.tv slash shares to find out about that. It only remains for me to say, good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. Goodbye.